submitted their application to have a statement of two main witnesses read into evidence by way of the Evidence Act, which means essentially that because the witnesses weren't coming, they wanted to read the statement into evidence without the witness actually being there. Um, so that was going on from last week and essentially our argument was that the police have not really done enough to secure the presence of these witnesses mm -hmm. because what the, the act really allows for is that all reasonable steps need to be taken before the judge can then decide whether or not the statement can go in. Um, there were some circumstances where it was clear that the police really didn't look for these witnesses. There are persons who are affiliated with the witnesses, their family members, um, place of address, and the police didn't check. Um, as it relates to one particular witness, from the very early stages we had indicated that um, we had some concerns about the identity of this witness. Not that the witness didn't exist per se, because I'm sure that there was a real person who had given that statement, mm -hmm. but as to that person's identity, is right. what we were trying to ascertain. Um, to no avail. A statement from a particular witness indicated that she had asked the witness about um, an identification card, some form of identity, and he says that he had lost it. Um, all of our checks throughout the trial proved that the witness had no birth certificate, the witness had no TRN, the witness was not on the voter's ID, voter's list anywhere, um, the three schools that he indicated he attended, there is no record of that witness. There's no record of that person born on that day to those particular parents, which is really what the test would be. I am John Brown. My date of birth is X. Um, these are my parents. I have born and grew up in a particular area. And there is no record of this person. So the judge was really left to determine whether or not he wanted to accept the say-so of this witness based on the fact that the police were saying they really had no fixed place of address for this witness so we couldn't find him and that is really what the case turned on um, yesterday and then today the judge just entered a formal verdict well instructed the jury to enter a formal verdict of, of not guilty so as far as this case is concerned he has been found not guilty no the way it can come back murder. it's done that's the end of the matter attorney. amazing after two years plus, this was what the prosecution had to offer. It, it seems like, you know, for all this time the man has been behind bars, that there must have been a great preponderance of evidence or some reason to hold him for all this time. Were you surprised that that was all they brought to the table? No, but I think we spoke about this before. I think you and I had a conversation about this before um, as to what what the strength of the evidence against him in any of these cases and I think at the time um, you know there was this sort of media frenzy about him being charged for something else um, multiple murder charges yep and this sort of thing and, and at the end of the day he was only really charged for um, two counts of murder two separate murders and and sometime later he was charged for the offense of attempting to pervert the course of justice mm. in relation to one of those those murders um, from our uh, position from day one was, was very clear. We didn't believe that they had any witnesses. We didn't believe that the police were investigating the matter properly. And in relation to the second, the, the second offense, it's really a circumstantial case. This is the one that's still to be heard. The in one that is, that, yeah. that is still pending. The, right. the, the Crown will not even be in a position to say that this person is, is really dead. Really? Absolutely. Can so, you explain that a little more? Yeah. Alright, the basis of that offense is um, a number of persons to include Adija Palmer um, beat somebody to death. There is no IC witness to the incident. So all the witness says is that he was in the company of this person. He ran, left the person there and has not seen him since. That is the, the height of the Crown's case. There is no body. There is no DNA evidence. There is no video. There is no pictures. I think we had spoken about We that heard before. about video, yes. camera there's, phones. There is none of that. There is none of that. 
What, uh, can you, I mean, I'm, I know I'm asking you to postulate, but can you sort of think as to why within the, the public's consciousness there was this sort of sense that very specific things were being discussed in terms of evidence, like the camera phone, you know, like the, the fact that these were, you know, there were all of these different incidents, there were all of these different witnesses? Right. Uh, when, when, sorry, when we made the bail application the last time, um, sir, we looked at the issue of the police using the media to prejudice his status as a fit and proper candidate for bail. So, from the very outset, um, the police indicated that they had the murder on video. That's not so. Mm -hmm. We brought that to the attention of the judge. They then indicated that they had done some DNA sample testing and that it created a link between Adija Palmer and the murder. Mm -hmm. That is not so. Um, they then came and said that they had, um, I believe, some text messages, some sort of admission on his behalf via text messages. That is not so. And every time we went to court to make an application for bail for him, we heard about something new that they had that was going to be used to strengthen the Crown's case. And none of it has turned out to be true. We brought that to the attention of the judge. And they said, well, well, he has another murder case. So here it is. He's left with only one. Mm -hmm. None of what the prosecution has said is true. And we're of the view that he should be offered bail. Whether we'll make another application now or in the near future is, is something that he'll have to instruct us on. But it's definitely an option at this stage. Can you comment a little bit on the fact that, you know, um, Vibes Cartel as, a, as an entertainer is not the only entertainer who has been jailed for long periods of time before any trial or before any, any bail hearing. Can you, can you comment on the, the justice system's uh, treatment of Entertainment from the from the point of when they are charged with a particular crime through to a situation like this. Um, he would be in custody now for almost three years, mm -hmm. I believe. In the ordinary course of things, you would expect that a person would be tried within about two years, mm -hmm. because the matter would be at the preliminary inquiry stage um, at the the resident magistrate's court, it, it may very well spend somewhere between six or eight months at that stage. Um, it is then sent to the circuit court where he may very well spend another year before the matter is, is, is properly dealt with. There are circumstances where people spend up to four and five years without a trial for one reason or the other. But in this case, because we were of the view that what the police were doing to him was wrong, we push for an early trial. Now, he, it is somewhat of a special case because he had another charge pending. Mm -hmm. So the mere fact that he has been in custody for almost three years is not in and of itself excessive, in other words. But we were of the view that he needs to be tried quickly. And we think that in this case, um, even though people may form the view that it is still long, um, it, you know, we, it, our position was, look, you can take all the time you want to find whatever witnesses you want, but give us bail so he can go and make a living. Mm -hmm. You know, so that is so we're back. That's that's the position that we're back to here now, as it relates to his bail. Do you feel like the there's something more than just a shoddy investigation going on here? That there's maybe a, you know a vendetta at work or something. I mean, you know, cartel had a very uh, well-known disagreement with a uh, former police officer and promoter shortly before I have heard that before yeah um, I, I think that because of, of, of really how the case the cases have been progressing I think that you could definitely draw that conclusion um, I can't say one way or the other what the problem is or where it's coming from but I think that looking at how the cases have been compiled 
and looking at how they have progressed, particularly with the witnesses in this case, um, I would say that there is, there is an ulterior motive. There is something behind what the police um, are doing. And, and quite frankly, for me, if you don't like the way he looks or you don't like the music he sings, that's one thing. But don't try to keep a man in custody in order to almost censor his image and his music. So essentially what we're saying is here, here you have a statement from somebody who says that they witnessed this crime. And there's no record of them anywhere. Right, so no what it really to. suggests is that there is some malfeasance on behalf of the police. Fabricate. I mean, who, who, who is this person? And um, I think to date we, have, we haven't been able to ascertain that. So the question really is, why is it that the state would allow the police to operate in that way while the man is in custody? Yeah. If there is concerns about that and it's raised and it's legitimate, often bail and you can iron it out. It's not, you know, it's not, you know, logically, um, it just it doesn't make sense, you know, how they're proceeding. Didn't I read a week or two ago that there was some testimony in court from people who either had heard something or, not an eyewitness per se, but I read a story that there was some person in court giving testimony. The procedure would be that the investigating officer who is the one that had taken the statements from these witnesses he would start to give his evidence okay the, so the, the case officer. was started okay and halfway through he would say i cannot find witness a and witness b mm. and what you would enter into is a void there which really equates to a trial within a trial so you would stop his testimony and he would then give evidence as to steps that he has taken to try and find these witnesses. Okay. So that is the stage that we had reached where the judge said essentially that you haven't done what you need to do. I'm so the, the testimony was made by a police officer, not by any actual witness. Right, in the right. Okay. So he would just be considered like a formal witness. He would be the one that would have investigated the matter, take statements from witnesses. I see. That sort of thing. So. There's another person in lockup with cartel. Everything that goes for cartel now, is it the same thing with that individual? Which person? Sean oh, Storm? Um, oh, is it Sha Sean Storm? Mm -hmm. That's it. No, because he's not charged in this case. He wasn't oh. charged, he's in the other one. All right. So November again is, is when he would come to court. And I guess you know, this is the thing with the media. They basically group everybody in one thing. And so they come and they report. So they make it seem as if everybody's in one situation. So that's... Something. But I think that, that, that definitely has been a challenge for, for the defense from day one um, because we also felt that other persons in the case were being prejudiced by the sort of media frenzy about what they had on tape and yeah. DNA evidence and all of this sort. And I think that it really has, has put the other persons that are charged with him at a disadvantage. Mm. Um, decisions were made uh, in terms of separating the legal team and bringing in other attorneys to address those issues with their respective clients. So I think we have made some amount of progress. Okay. We'll go to court again in November mm -hmm. uh, for the other matter, but I think we will seek to seek an earlier date to see if we can get bail for it. And what, when you say seek an earlier date, would there be any kind of sense in your mind as to when that would be? Only, only because um, it will take a couple of weeks to put the documents together and to try and get the date. But Anywhere, anywhere between like three and four weeks is kind of what we'll be looking at. Okay. So he'll not make some chest. <laughs> <laughs> so how is he? He's good. He didn't see the um, description that he's fat. He has gotten fat. So the food in, in jail is good? <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> well, apparently, I, I guess because he's now resting, um, from what they were saying, you know, he's known to work long hours, so he's resting and eating. What did he say when the verdict was yes. announced? Did you, did you have a conversation with him? No, I think just an ear to ear grin is really what, what we got. So. And what sort of support did he have in court and outside court? What was the scene like there? Um, the biggest I've ever seen. Biggest I've ever seen. So it's good. His fans are still hanging in there. Who's I understand there's a statement of some kind that he's made. 
was that a statement? Yeah. Um, I believe there is a press release from him. Okay. Shot, okay. A document which speaks for itself. So. In terms of the case for November, does the prospects look good? We thought initially that the case that we just completed was the more difficult of the two cases because there was a purported IC witness. Um, so as far as we are concerned, the, the highest mountain is, is, is now behind us. Um, having been in communication with Cartel since the beginning to now, how do you think Adija Palmer the individual has been changed as opposed to um and sorry how do how do you think that how do what do you think it would mean for vibes cartel the artist i think that's a question better directed to, to our team well from what you've seen uh, i think that there's a lot of frustration towards the system um, and he feels that you know he he really should be given a fair shake um, at a you know at a fair trial and that's kind of where you know our head was originally um, and I, th I think that you know as with anybody you know you spend three years in custody it must affect it must affect you you know but I suspect that you will hear it in his music when he's off on bail okay mm -hmm. um, is he being given special treatment in lock -up? not that I'm aware of Okay, uh, there was a situation last month where he was taken to the KPH. Right. Um, what exactly was it that he was affected by? Uh, it appears that he was having some chest pains and he went and did an x-ray and a basic checkup. It seems that all is well. So. Okay, and how can fans support him while he's in lockup? I mean, people have been coming to the court, but ha have they been disruptive or anything outside or causing any problem outside like what not that i'm aware of i did see an article that spoke of some incident outside but i i wasn't there so i don't know um what that is about but i, I think that what he would really want from his fans is to just stay positive and continue supporting him and his music